Drinking is widely accepted as a social norm. In fact, I would argue if you don't drink, people are like, what's wrong with you? You're not normal. Rarely do we consider the long-term impact to our overall health and other significant downsides to drinking. That's where I come in. My name is Nidhi Mobina, and I created this course to help you evaluate the role alcohol is playing in your life. I have an online community called The Sober Butterfly, where I host a podcast weekly, as well as a blog. So my years of expertise in the classroom has helped me create a program that will work. And this program, by the way, is 100% free. I'm not charging a single penny for this because I want this to reach as many people who may need it as possible. Let me be clear in saying that I'm not here to diagnose you, I'm not here to label you, I'm not here to tell you about yourself. Only you can do that. I don't even know you. <laughs> I'm just a girl, a sober girl, who implemented all of the strategies that I'm sharing with you in this course to be able to change my relationship with alcohol. Now, the change that I personally made was to remove it completely. But I'm not here to sell sobriety. As amazing as I know it has been and has been like the quintessential thing that has completely transformed my life, it may not be for you. We are not the same person. So I want to be clear that I'm not selling sobriety, but I do think everyone and anyone can benefit from taking a break from alcohol. And what better time than now? January 1st marks the beginning of dry January. But you can do this course whenever you want, okay? Like if it's June, July, September, I don't care. If you find this on YouTube, go ahead and use it. It's a free resource for you. What you're going to need for your 30 days of sobriety is a notebook, okay? It could be a nice notebook like this one or a composition notebook, something cheap. Don't spend a lot of money on it. Just something that you can jot down your thoughts. The greatest asset that having a journal of any kind provides is data. Now, as a teacher, we are very much data oriented and data driven in our decision making process. So I can't, you know, for example, say that a student mastered a skill if the data is not there. How do you know? You need something that you can refer back to at a later time to know where you were and where you're going. That is the quantitative data and that's what the journal or the notebook will provide for you. So that's the only like mandatory thing that you need for this course. I have along the way a lot of suggested materials that will serve you, which we'll get into in later lessons. But the, the notebook or at least keeping the notes on your phone, that's a non-negotiable. You need that. If you want more of a guided approach to quitting alcohol. Now I've created a workbook. I put a lot of time and effort into this workbook that accompanies these modules through these videos on YouTube that are free. But if you want that workbook, go ahead and purchase it on the soberbutterfly.com. As valuable as the workbook is, you don't have to buy it to do well here. You don't have to purchase or pay for a single thing to change your relationship with alcohol. I want to make this accessible. I want as many people who need this to receive this. And a lot of the information that I share in the workbook is also mentioned on this platform. I wanted to make this course as digestible as possible. So what I've done is I have made four separate videos that reflect four different modules that should be completed over the course of four weeks. Module one is mainly all about getting to know yourself. Now you may be thinking, Nadine, I already know who I am. I already know where I stand with alcohol. I already know that I want to take a break. All of those things may be true, but we need to dig deeper. We need to get under the hood and uncover what's driving a lot of our decision making and make a commitment to the 30 days. While this course is designed for everyone, I want to be clear. If you have a physical addiction to alcohol or you are worried for any medical reasons that doing a detox or removing alcohol from your lifestyle for 30 days may have a negative impact on your health, that is not to be taken lightly. I am not a doctor. So please consult a medical professional if you think that you are at risk for developing any repercussions from removing alcohol. All right, that's all I have to say about that. So let's get started. Okay, hello. Officially, welcome to the Guide to Quitting Alcohol 30 Days 
to transform your life with moi, Nadine Movina, aka The Sober Butterfly. So I wanted to start with where we are and where I was a year and a half ago in my caterpillar stage. Now the life cycle of a caterpillar symbolizes times when you're dealing with potential and transformation. You're going through a positive transformation. I want to frame that for you. In the context of this course, we're going to see the caterpillar as a sign that we are changing our relationship with alcohol or at least evaluating it. So the questions that I want you to think about for module one, what are your core values? We'll be looking at your why. And finally, before we proceed any further, I want to know if you can commit to the 30 days. What are core values? You may be wondering what core values have to do with sobriety or not drinking. Well, you'd be surprised because core values are driving a lot of your decision making and it's important to tap into what really matters and filter out the stuff that doesn't matter. So this lesson is going to help you do just that. Now, core values can be defined as personal ethics or ideals that guide you when making decisions, building relationships, and solving problems. I like to think of core values as your inner compass that guides you. You wanting to remove alcohol from your life for 30 days or beyond, that is connected to all three of these strands, right? You're making a decision, you're building a relationship with yourself, and then later on connection with others, and you're solving a problem, which is alcohol is in your way in some capacity, right? The extreme of that capacity varies, but you want to solve the problem of having alcohol be around. In terms of finding out your core values, the first thing you can do is just do a quick Google search. Go to Google and type in core values list, and you will find a host of different core values, okay? So once you look at the core value list, you're going to identify 10 core values that you connect with. Just 10. There are thousands. I don't know if there are thousands. There are hundreds. There's a lot. Pick 10. 10 that resonate with you. I like to go based off of my gut. So like the thing that stands out to me and I feel like a visceral connection with, I will put that down. Then once you have your list of 10 core values, you're going to narrow it down even more. So now you're down from 10 core values to only five. It could be tough, but you want to pick the five most important core values. Then ask yourself, am I aligned to my core values? This is a big one. In this moment of your life, at this juncture, are you living in alignment to the five core values that you have identified? Not like your future best self not like how you used to be in this moment. Are you in alignment to those five core values that you identified? Finally, map out how you can actually meet those core values and make it a reality. So if you're not in alignment, how come? How can we change that? Okay, so let me give an example. When I was doing my list of core values, honesty was one of the core values that stood out to me. When I had to answer that question, am I in alignment to that core value of honesty, the honest truth was, no, I wasn't. And so how, how could I rectify that? Well, quitting alcohol helped, of course, because when you are no longer drinking, you, you're not lying to yourself anymore. You're being honest. You're saying, hmm, at least for me, this is not serving me. Another way that I was able to make a shift, a small shift, but an impactful shift in becoming more in alignment to that core value of honesty was doing more self-reflection. So at the end of each day, taking a moment to journal or just to think back and say, okay, what happened today? What did I do right today? What can I do better tomorrow? How did my actions help me reach my ultimate goal or not? How did I self-sabotage or detract away from meeting that goal. Once again, you're hearing me say this a lot in this course, I wrote these things down. It's a lot easier to lie to yourself when you're just having this like stream of consciousness dialogue between you and you. But when you write something down, okay, when you write, write it down, there's evidence, there's a paper trail, you can refer back to it and then you can continue along this process of being honest and vulnerable with yourself which is a core value that I had, but I think can hold true for many people, no matter the core values that you choose. 
Welcome to lesson two. I'm so proud of you for identifying your five core values and being honest with yourself in determining whether or not you are in alignment with said core values. Now there was a rhyme and reason for me having you do that first because as mentioned, your core values are acting as an inner compass guiding you along this process. Now, if you see your core values as a compass, I'd then like you to think about your reason why as your anchor. Now, the anchor is what's grounding you throughout this whole process. For me, my reason why is simple, insanity. Hear me out, I'm not crazy. But insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, like being on that, that um, what do you call it? Like the hamster wheel, right? And expecting different results. That was me, day in, day out, getting home after a long day of work and drinking myself silly. Now I know we've often heard your reason why in the context of like your purpose, like your life's mission. And while that's a beautiful thing, I think it's a bit macro and I wanna make it more micro. I want to hone in for the process of this course, these next 30 days and potentially beyond, I want to think about just why you are doing this course. If it's helpful for you to think about the umbrella of your life's purpose and work, by all means go there. But for me, I just see it as like, what is going to help you through the next 30 days of this course? What is your reason why? You know the question was coming. What is your why? I want to know what is the thing that is pushing you to quit alcohol? Maybe you don't know what your reason why is. It's time to discover it. But I like this graphic because as cheesy as it seems, like yippee, ring, 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 the alarm clock's going off. There is a purpose, or at least I hope that you find your purpose for getting up each day. Is it, you know, your family? Do you have to support someone? Is it your puppy? I don't care what gets you through the door. The fact that you are here right now is a miracle. The fact that you want to be here is for a reason. So run with that. Don't spend too, too much time trying to figure out what your reason why is. You know, at the end of the day, you could just put you down on the paper and feel good about that. But for other people, they want to explore a little deeper and understand what is driving them to want to be sober. That's a beautiful thing too. Just do what works for you. I myself, like I mentioned before, I got sober because I was sick of doing the same thing over and over again. I stayed sober for me. If you feel comfortable and confident, please drop your reason why. I would love to hear in the comments what you guys are thinking in terms of your reasons for wanting to do this challenge. We are almost done with module one. The last lesson is simple, short and sweet. We are making a commitment. And this could be the end of the road for some people. If you can't commit to 30 days of no drinking, then it was nice meeting you. We had fun. You owe it to yourself to take this course seriously. You're here in the sober community quite often one day at a time and i stand behind that i do take my sobriety one day at a time because i also don't want to take it for granted who knows but at the same time going into this you have already done the inner work you know your reason why you have your core values you have a guide hello i'm here no exceptions no asterisk you are sober for 30 days make the commitment right here right now in fact I would love if you wrote in the comments, you know, what day are you starting? What is your commitment expiration date? When do you plan on reevaluating your relationship with alcohol after the 30 days? Let's see those dates, people. Drop them in the comments. And if you're following with my e-workbook, there is actually a pledge that I would like you to sign, okay? That's how serious I am. If you are at home, I want you to take a blood oath, okay? Right now, under the full moon, I'm kidding, obviously, don't. Don't do that. I'm really joking. All right. That's all I have for module one. Thank you so much. Let's just do a quick recap and see what we learned. In this module, we uncovered our core values. We discovered our reason why for completing this course. And we made a commitment to ourselves for 30 days of continued sobriety. No slip ups, no cheats. We're doing the thing. Okay, guys, it's been a pleasure. I'm so excited to see you in module two. 
next video, please, as a reminder, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with all my sober content. I have a podcast. I make vlogs, share with everyone that you know, no matter where they are, because remember, we can all benefit from taking a little detox or reevaluate how alcohol is showing up in our lives. Bye.